Welcome to Professor Sky's Spam Channel, where I talk about anything that's not new music. So I went to the movies. I went to the movies last night. I went to the, the discount theater in my town, which now costs $10. <clears throat> Used to be $2, whatever. Uh, and I went to go see Blue Beetle. And I just, I understand that we're in the middle of this superhero fatigue and I'm as fatigued as anyone else. Uh, but it's kind of a bummer, because of all the superhero movies I've seen, this is one of the best in terms of just sort of straight down the middle superhero that feels good, is the kind of thing I wish existed when I was a kid uh, that didn't exist. Uh, sort of a lot like Shazam, kind of had a very similar feeling to that. Um, but no one's going to see it because everyone doesn't care, and that's fine. But really, if it had done better, I think it would have attracted a lot more attention because I think it did some interesting things that other movies have not done. So these are my diverse thoughts on Blue Beetle, okay? First of all, it is a staunchly... Uh, spoilers, by the way. I mean, I'm not going to be talking about like specific plot points, you know, like, oh, it was the Red Beetle who did it. I don't care about that stuff. But obviously what makes it interesting, what makes it different, is that it is very consciously a movie for Mexican-Americans. It is a movie for Hispanics in America, with a Hispanic star and a Hispanic family at the very center. But it goes beyond that. First of all, the basic theme of the movie, roughly, is that you can either succeed in capitalism or you can succeed with a family, but you cannot do both. <laughs> so to win at capitalism is to lose at having a family. And uh, I think that's a pretty good thesis. <laughs> I think it holds up pretty well. Uh, I think it's a little bit bleak, but I think it's maybe true that in, in capitalism, uh, there is an emphasis on sort of personal success at, at the expense of your connection to others. So that's the thesis of the movie, which itself is a pretty interesting thesis, which I, don't, I haven't picked up on other people talking about. Now, of course, there's the representation, which everyone talks about, how important representation is. And yes, the, the young actor who plays Blue Beetle is a fascinating guy, all that. Uh, but really, it's this further theme that it's not just a movie for immigration, okay? Which is itself important, you know? I'm, I'm a language teacher, so I know the importance of immigration. I know how it makes countries stronger, how it makes countries better. I know how it's a humanitarian thing to do. I know how it's a moral obligation to, when you live in a successful country, to let in as many immigrants as you feasibly can. Okay, I, I understand that. This movie isn't just pro-immigration. It's pro-illegal immigration. The family that's there, it is heavily implied and directly stated that some of them came in illegally. So there's a scene in the movie where there's a very high-pressure scene and the bad guy shows up and there's helicopters and there's lights. And here's a movie that is so coded. It is the absolute fear of the illegal immigrant. And it doesn't matter if you're... what wave of immigration you came here. Unless you're Native American, you are an immigrant to this country. <clears throat> the way that this is coded, the way this whole scene is coded with this family being rounded up, Without ever, mentioning, without ever mentioning immigration, it's very clear that it is for the Mexican-American audience. It is about illegal immigration. It is just mentioned in the context of legal immigration. Yet, when it actually happens, there is no mention of immigration. It's subtle. It's interesting. It never says that ICE is the bad guy, but an ICE raid is at the center, is the nadir of this movie. It's at the very bottom of it. As a language teacher, I could not be happier for how this movie used Spanish. It appears as though <laughs> they pushed as hard as they could to include as much Spanish as possible. It takes place in a fictional city, so I didn't know if it was like in Mexico or in America at a certain point. It's basically like a fictional version of Miami, more or less. But I think that's on purpose. You know, I think that's an interesting idea. Or maybe they are in a different country that is bordering with America, it's very unclear exactly what the relationship is, but I think that's on purpose to show that we don't really know what codes they should be using, what languages they should be using, uh, because it, uh, that confusion is part of the immigrant experience, the passing between languages, especially for young people. The older people speak only in Spanish, the younger people speak almost only in English, but they mutually understand each other. And the, the, the courage that it had to have entire scenes subtitled is quite amazing. And then the fact that the, 
that the, the, the female lead is for some reason Brazilian, for reasons I can't figure out. I mean, it's not a perfect movie. I'm not going to say it's a perfect movie. I don't understand the relationship between this person, but at a certain point, she just lets out some Portuguese, you know? Like, for, for those of you who are language fans, you know, really hitting hard with the sort of variation of language. George Lopez is hilarious as this, what seems like is going to be a Mexican stereotype, but he is like a Mexican stereotype inserted into a movie that does not treat Mexican Americans stereotypically. So he has the Cheech and Chong bobbleheads, he has the big truck and he calls it Taco, he has all these things, but because everyone else is so fleshed out, he just gets to be a fun character. The most cartoonish character in the whole movie is Susan Sarandon's character, who is a terrible actress in this movie, but I think it's on purpose. I think she's acting poorly on purpose. I think it's supposed to look like a telenovela. It's supposed to look like she's supposed to be a bad guy from a Mexican soap opera. And they make multiple references to Mexican soap operas here, which I didn't understand, because I'm not Spanish. I don't speak Spanish. I'm not Mexican. I'm not Hispanic. I didn't grow up watching these kinds of sitcoms. It's not for me, okay? It's actually treating its audience seriously, and it made this movie and all these references, and I think Susan Sarandon was intentionally, because she's a great actress. Yeah, she is. I'm thinking, is she a great actress? Yeah, she is. The way that she acts is so over the top. It's just great. As a final note, there are my main problem with it is there's one drug joke, and that's kind of boring. There's two boner jokes, <laughs> which is like a lot. Like that's a high quantity of boner jokes. But my, my final comment about the movie will be a musical mistake, <laughs> okay? So in general, the music is great. It's all music sung in Spanish. I don't know the source of it. I would love to have the, uh, the, the soundtrack, but uh, at a... I was just doing my Blue Beetle thing. Oh! It's okay, you know, I'm gonna take it downstairs because I'm almost done. I'm just making the music points. So I'm just, just don't worry about me. I'm just gonna take this downstairs and I'm gonna do it. You like Blue Beetle, right? I love Blue Beetle. Yeah. Yeah, take your kids. It's awesome. Okay, so uh, beyond that, right? So the music is great in, in, the, in the whole movie, right? And I'm gonna take you to the highs and the lows of the music in this movie. So the absolute low point is, and again, spoiler, if you haven't seen the movie, this is a, a very a crucial uh, plot point. Uh, the father dies, okay? The father dies of a heart attack. And having a father, where am I even? Jesus. Uh, <laughs> the father dies of a heart attack, right? And as, having a father who died of heart failure is kind of rough for me to watch, you know, but that's fine. The next song that they put on in the big action scene is Kickstart My Heart. And it's a comedy scene, okay? It's a comedy scene, kick, stop, my heart. Like, this is, this has to be, <laughs> if this is not intentional, if it's intentional, it's cruel. If it's unintentional, it's unbelievably stupid. But then it made up for it by playing insane, I mean, um, uh, I Ain't Going Out Like That by Cypress Hill, produced by DJ Muggs. I, the only thing I wish, if I could do one thing to change this movie, it wouldn't be take out Kickstart My Heart, it wouldn't be doing this, it would just be to crank that up more. Because that song kicks ass, it's part of the Mexican American experience, it's just boom ding, boom ding, boom ding, boom ding. It was just awesome, the fight scene was great. So, go see Blue Beetle, I think it's great, I think it's important, and I think it's a bummer that no one cares about it. And my family's here, so I'm gonna go see them. <laughs> Alright, uh, until next time, now there's the camera.